everyone. Welcome back to the Music Made Me podcast. This is episode three. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing, liking, following. We really appreciate it. Today, we talk to Camille Ray. She's a Nashville recording artist. And as we find out, she's had quite the journey, including moving down to Nashville with only a dream and a couple of bucks in her pocket. How are you? Hi, good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. I yeah. have a little monster here, a little a little puppy. So yes, I heard you. Became she might be. In... Yes, I did. <laughs> she is very cute. Thank you. I saw her with that big. Uh, I can't remember what type of dog it was on your social media. Oh, the husky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cute. They uh, was that the first time they had met? Yes, that was her first her first other dog encounter. Really. So, yeah, she did really well. Yeah, she was pretty brave with that big thing. Yeah, the the do- the husky was actually scared of her. So really, really- yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's sometimes the way it goes, hey? Yeah, I didn't know where she was. She's pretty feisty though, so I may have to put her in her kennel. But she's uh, <laughs> she doesn't uh, she likes to hop on the keys or on the keyboard and mess things up. So uh, just like a cat. Yeah, she's kind of like a cat. She reminds me a lot of a cat, actually. So was she a rescue? Uh, no, I actually, I got her from, um, from a lady, a local, a local lady that just happened to have, have a, a little litter of puppies and, uh, they didn't, they didn't know what was going to happen. So she just was a, just a kind of a last minute decision, but <laughs> pretty good one. Well, yeah, that's cool. And that was one of the, one of the things to top off 2020 for you, right? On a personal level, um, yeah, getting sure. engaged, becoming an aunt or yes. going to become an aunt. Yeah, my sister just found out she's having a little boy, so that's exciting. Um, she's wanted to be a mom since she was a, you know, that's been a dream of hers. So I'm very happy for her. And then I became a dog mom. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you have a date for the wedding? April twenty fourth. April twenty fourth. Mm-hmm. And in Nashville or back home or? Uh, Nashville. So it'll be at um, it's called Fat Bottom Brewery in Nashville. It's a really nice brewery going toward Memphis. Um, we're really excited. It's, it's a beautiful place and we're getting everything all planned and organized. So awesome. That must be keeping you busy. Pretty busy, but, um, but we've had some, some really great people to work with. So it hasn't been too, too very stressful. Oh, that's good. That always makes it easier. Mm-hmm. So are you getting used to these virtual meetups these days? Actually, I actually get more nervous doing like virtual concerts and things than I do in front of actual people. Is I don't know right? what it is. I feel really awkward with no one being in the room and still having to engage as if they are. I just get, I just kind of, I kind of freak out a little bit. Yeah. I have to talk myself down before I get on. But then once it starts, it's fine. But yeah, I get the same way. Um, yeah. Because I was a television reporter for 13 years and, you know, doing face to face interviews. And now, I'm basically, you know, looking at a camera, looking at the computer screen, trying to do it. And yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah. something you have to get used to because it's a little impersonal, but you have to make it personal, right? Exactly. And I tend to, when, especially if I don't, if I'm, it's like my first time talking to someone on the phone or it's a professional thing, I tend to talk differently. I'll, I'll take my voice up to a different <laughs> Um, it's like a different inflection and and I sound like a some people say I sound like a southern Disney princess and that's not <laughs> my voice but for some reason I feel like I need to use it in in situations like that and I just it's so ingenuine but, but I'm getting I'm getting more accustomed to the whole virtual thing yeah hopefully it won't last much longer but you know I'm I guess you're probably missing being you know, doing the radio tours I saw on your social media posting some yeah. flashbacks to the radio tours and actually uh-huh. being able to get out there Exactly. Um, I've been blessed enough to, I do a lot of solo shows on my own and I do smaller venues and outdoor, there's in, like, I go to Georgia a lot. So it's usually pretty warm there pretty for the most of the year. So I've been blessed to still keep some of my solo shows during the months and still be able to perform live. Um, but yeah, the radio tours, we've, we've actually not done a whole lot, but what we've done have been virtual and it's just, it's just so much more fun to go to the radio stations and just get that, I don't know, get that lifestyle and meet people in person and different personalities. I really do miss that. 
what's the landscape down there right now? Because I'm seeing some country artists posting that they're having shows and, and some other bands posting that they're having shows. But then, you know, I see other people saying that it's total lockdown. So what, especially in the Nashville area, where are you guys at with shows versus being locked in? Um, well, some places have chosen to to close. Um, for But the mandate right now is I think it's it might be 50% capacity still maybe I think that's what it is and then they close around 10 or 10 or 11 p.m so a lot of places downtown are still having still having bands full bands and shows but their capacity is is monitored and they close early oh okay so Um, have you been able to have some shows then like are you kind of having a regular schedule I've actually been working with um with some it's called bell court taps cabana taps and alley taps it's the songwriters um three songwriters venues and i've been working more with that this year um as far as doing rounds and helping new artists in town and and just kind of um trying my hand at that i've always wanted to 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 do that so this year's kind of given me that opportunity to focus more on the writing and more on just kind of giving back and helping new artists because i mean i've been Let's just say I've been scammed a lot throughout my almost a decade here in Nashville. Um, And I've also worked with amazing people. So I want to help new people in town and make sure that they, they stick around and they're not, you know, they're not forced to go home by some crazy, crazy means of, of somebody being dishonest. So, but anyway, um, Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of rounds and, and, and more things like that this year. So was it 2012 that you moved down to Nashville? 20 yeah 20 2012 or 2013 okay. i think it was the end of 2012 yeah and before that you were actually up in my stomping grounds in vancouver yes um i'm all i'm four or five hours away inland from there okay. yeah. yeah um I, so what brought you up i actually was married to a canadian for oh, okay. four years and he um, wanted to go back to school and get his master's degree. Um, so he uh, got into UVic and we moved to Victoria. Or actually, yeah, we moved to Victoria and I did some musical theater work and stuff up there. I was more into the musical theater world then. And I worked in Duncan at a, at a small school, small music school, did their music directing choreography for the musical theater programs. And um, then we moved to Vancouver last year there. And that was, I loved it up there. Of course, I can't legally live there now. I wish I could, but uh, (laughs) it was was probably one of the best times and most, it just shaped me, you know, because in your late twenties, you're really figuring out who you are, what you believe in, um, in all facets of, of life. And I just met some amazing people and it's, it's just great up there. I really do miss it. Yeah. And did you ever come into the interior to the Kelowna area? No, no. Okay. That's where I'm from. Beautiful area. Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. That's gorgeous. But yeah. So th- did he come to Nashville with you or is that, was that actually sort of that's kind of where we, where we parted ways. Um, I knew that I wanted to, I kind of, str- I kind of struggled with, what I wanted to do with my music and I love Broadway and musicals and things but I'm not a very good dancer and at the time it was a very heavy all all of the roles that were out at the time were heavy dance roles and I was like there's no way I can compete with these girls that have been been training since they were three so I just kind of you know chalked it up to the fact that it wasn't you know I wasn't quite qualified for that and um, just went back to my roots of singing and songwriting and I just said, you know, I'm going to move to Nashville in September and you can come with me or you, or you don't have to, you know, we can, we can figure it out, but that's what I'm doing because I felt like I given a lot to his dreams and his career goals. And so anyway, Mm -hmm. I moved to Nashville. He went to Italy to study for his, for his degree, for his, um, he was in political science at the time. Oh, okay. So how difficult was that, well, that transition in life for you or, or was it pretty easy well, because you knew what you wanted to do? It was easy in the fact that I knew I was doing the right thing. And I knew that I had made it clear um, to him and to everyone in my life that this was the path I was going. So there was no, there was no surprises. There was, 
I've always been very upfront and honest about it. So as far as that goes, the transition, it was scary. And I was very intimidated by, by moving and being by myself again and all that. But, um, but it was very hard, of course, on, on the relationship. And we eventually decided to part ways just because, you know, we were very different in what we wanted. And it was, it was a, a very um, calm and civil breakup. And he's doing his thing, teaching in Europe somewhere. And I'm doing mine. So, you know, right. it all worked out for the best. And so did that experience uh, weigh a lot on your writing when you first moved to Nashville then? I've done a lot of, a lot of like competitions and things where your sad stories weigh in on your winning. You know what I'm saying? Like you yep. have to, everybody wants you to have a story right. and we could sit here and talk about that all day. You know, we could just get a bottle of wine and talk about that all day. So I make it sound like it was just this happy, wonderful thing, but it, it wasn't, it was, it was horrible. It was a horrible time in my life, but it did shape who I became my writing. Um, actually my song, I need me, I wrote when I was married and it just talks about just kind of just conforming to your surroundings, like, or the, the backstory to it is conforming to other people. You know, you, you're in a relationship, you're in a job, you're whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be a crappy job you're in and you're conforming to whatever's around you and it's just making you unhappy. Right. And I realized that's what I was doing. And so I sat down and wrote this song about just knowing that I needed to realize what was going on and what was going to make me happy. But, but making those changes is going to be hard. So I had to make the decision of either staying where I was and being okay or taking the jump and the leap and, and making all the changes and turning my world upside down and actually having the chance to be happy. And so that was the backstory of the song. And that's probably, that's been my most popular song is people still connect with it. Um, and I wrote that in the midst of all the craziness. And then it's, it's just shaped, I guess it's made me more empathetic and it's, and more relatable to people because even though people love happy songs about day drinking or pickup trucks, they really do need to hear the real stuff and, and connect with that and kind of get their emotions out through music. So, so it's helped me write some, you know, really good songs in the future or in the present. Right. And you, you grew up just, just down the road from Nashville about what, three or four hours. Yeah. It's about three and a half hours, um, near Lexington, Kentucky, okay. a little town called Mount Vernon. Yeah. Yeah. And so did you travel into Nashville quite a bit as a kid? Actually, no. Um, I, I didn't go into Nashville for the first time until I was about uh, probably 23 or 24. Oh, wow. Um, and I, I traveled there, you know, just to, just to see if I liked it and wanted to move. And then I got a little detoured, but um, as a kid, I did a lot of talent shows um, in the Kentucky area. I, I did travel down to the Pigeon Forge, Tennessee a lot. And there was a, you know, music scene there. Um, but I just sang church revivals, um, picnics, whatever I could do as a kid. I just was constantly singing. Um, but yeah, Nashville didn't really happen until, until I was an adult. Did your country roots kind of come out when you hit Nashville? Cause it seems like when you were younger, it was more of the church and then the theater, or were you singing quite a bit of country back when you were young at the talent yeah, shows as well? I, I, still, I mean, I mostly sang a lot of my, my performing was, was church, but any kind of secular performance, it was always country. Okay. So um, I grew up singing like the, the nineties, uh, Martina McBride, Faith Hill, Trisha Yearwood, like Winona Judd. I did, you know, just those, those typical powerhouse women of the nineties kind of modeled, model my singing. And actually my writing now is very similar to, to that as a kid. Right. Um, but yeah. I've always had the country roots and um, there's a, there's an entertainment center called Renfro Valley and it's, it's kind of, it's not really in operation right now, but when I was a kid, it was very, very popular and uh they did country and gospel gospel shows so it fit right in with with what i did as a kid were your parents musicians is that how you kind of caught the my bug? my dad sings it's not a consistent thing for him but 
his voice is is beautiful like i don't understand why he doesn't sing all the time um but my aunt his sister she's always sang in church she plays the guitar um and she still sings actively in church and she's actually who um realized that i could sing i was riding along in the car with her when i was about four years old and i was singing along with with her songs that she was rehearsing and she asked me if i wanted to sing and i was like sure and so I got up at, I think th it was three or four. And that was my first public performance. And I didn't, I didn't stop after that. So she's who I credit to discovering my interest and, and talent for music. And you went to university for musical education. So yes. did you know all along that you wanted to do something with music for your profession? Yes, I have always known since I was three that I wanted to be a professional singer always. But I also knew I, I would either play when I was a little girl, I would play, you know, superstar or a teacher. And I've actually been blessed enough to, to be able to do, well, I may not necessarily be a superstar yet, but to be able to do both of those career paths. Um, so that's really cool. But yeah, I went to um, university of the Cumberlands in Kentucky and got a music ed degree. And my first three years out of college, I taught high school choir and drama in my hometown. And then from there, I, I moved on to, to pursue the performance side of things. Yeah, and moving down to Nashville, I don't know if people can really understand what it's like there unless you're in it. Um, mm -hmm. From the outside, it kind of feels like Hollywood almost. Like there's so many people that go down and there's so many people that get just chewed up and spit out the second they get yeah. there. So what was it like for you when you first arrived? Was it just like totally overwhelming? Well, it's once again, I moved to Nashville and I hope, I hope my ex-husband doesn't ever watch this, but he basically took all of our money with him and I had like $700 to my name. And I moved in with a friend. She graciously let me stay with her um, in her extra room. And so I had nothing. I had no, I, very little money. Um, I didn't have any job prospects. I just moved because I didn't. I mean, I was like, if I don't do it now, I will never do it. Right. And when I moved, I got a job. I had three jobs, three or four jobs. Um, one was at a petting farm. <laughs> and I gave tours to kids. It was, it was very interesting. And I had a job as a hostess at um, one of the performance venues called The Row in Midtown, which, you know, really introduced me to a lot of, of I'm glad I had that job. And I did, uh, I had a job teaching voice lessons at two different schools. So I was, it was crazy. Um, but my biggest thing, I think that kept me here was I got into the singer songwriter community. So I started going to, to writers rounds and just singing all the songs that I've, that I've ever written, writing new songs with new people. And the community is just so um, nurturing and open. It's, it's a lot different than if I had decided to go downtown Nashville and try to get gigs right away because it's just a little more territorial there. You know, people have their spots and they're not as nice. We'll put it that way. Uh, so I think I, I just happened to, to take the right route and meet the right people. And I was just really determined and I wasn't going to go home. Like I, I, that wasn't an option for me. So I just figured out what worked best for me. I ended up after, you know, meeting the right people and, and just kind of sticking around certain venues, booking um, my first paying shows and it, it just grew from there. And but so it is very hard. Yeah. And when you're down there, you know, a lot of people are just focused on the spotlight, right? They want the spotlight yeah. on them. But like for you getting into the songwriting, is that mm -hmm. the savior, like having that to lean on as well as the performance side? I would say most definitely because you're allowed to grow when, when you, when you go that route. Um, some people aren't writers, which is fine, but you can still get into these communities. And I think the biggest, my biggest advice for someone moving to town, um, is just have an open mind. Like you're not going to come here and in a month be famous. 
or in a year most of the time or two or three or four most of the time unless you get lucky and just meet the right people not to be negative but you're probably not going to be a superstar in your first five years here some people it takes 25 years um some people decide that it's not for them and they go home or some people hit it big in the first couple of years they're here so it, you just have to have an open mind um and you can't focus too much on the fame part um which I tend to do and it gets me down a lot because I'm like I should be here I should be a little further I should and it I, I really psych myself out a lot of times but it's just knowing what you're good at um and really capitalizing on all the things that you can do for your career and inviting the right people into your circle and just making it a community more so than than a than a game I guess if that makes sense just yeah for making sure. it a lifestyle yeah. And yeah. you said that, you know, your mindset is this is what you want to do. This is where you want to live. But is it a constant struggle to keep your head in the game and tell yourself that, you know what, this is okay. I'm doing what I love. You know, I might not be famous. I might not be on billboards, but at least I'm doing what I love. Is that a regular thing you have to remind yourself of, or does it come in sort of For waves? me, yes. For me, yes. Um, and that's something that I don't share a lot, honestly. Um, but I've always, I have very high standards for, for myself, for my goals. Like I want to be the best and I always have it, everything, which is why I focus on very few things. Um, so yeah, I do have to tell myself and my, I have, a, I, my fiance is very supportive in this and letting me know that you're doing this for a living. Like you're getting to sing and make money and support yourself for a living, which is something that most people can't say, you know, they, they dream of doing something like this. So it's just kind of putting it into perspective. Um, all the things that I have accomplished with my music, um, and, and being an independent artist or even, even being with a label, whatever you're doing all this stuff, you're putting your, your, your music out online. You're not always looking at your, at your stats. So you really don't know how big of an impact you're making right unless someone you know from australia messages you and says hey you, you know you're you're my number one artist like i listen to or a radio station from new zealand that has millions of listeners it's like we're so excited to have you on everybody loves you and you're like what <laughs> i didn't know that so you know you're making a bigger impact than you think but you're kind of in the eye of the storm and you're doing everything and it, it can get discouraging at times, but I definitely have to remind myself of all of those, all of those things daily. Um, especially on year seven, because you know, it gets, it gets getting a little tiresome in 2020 it's just been, it's knocked everybody on their butt. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And talk about the relationship with Lucy and how that started and when it started. Yeah. So Lucy and I met, probably t going on three years ago and she actually came to a round I was singing in and we are my keyboard player we she was in a trio with him and so I met her through him and it just so happened that their lead singer had left the group so they needed a singer for a competition they were doing and I was like eh, I'll do it you know I'll, I'll step in and do it and we ended up winning the competition and we got offered a record deal that we ended up not taking because it really wasn't the best for us at the time. And so we just connected and then we decided that it, the group just wasn't working. Um, we were just all three in different places and we parted ways. Lucy and I remained friends. And then she started doing some things on her own and she decided she wanted to start a collaborative group where she brought artists in and, and just kind of did this. It was a really cool idea. And I mean, it still is the, the thing, but she was going to do it by herself. And then we just started writing together a lot and hanging out together. And we're like, why don't we just make this a, a duo? And then we can still do the original idea, but there will just be, you know, a lead singer and a lead violinist, uh, viola. It was just, we wanted to have equal focus on, on both of our instruments and it's worked out. So we work really well together. She's one of the hardest workers I know and um our personalities vibe well and she's just a great person and a great musician and our goal is just to make good music so um we've become really great friends in the process but yeah it's just 
it's just one of those things where you just kind of collaboratively meet someone and it just ends up working into something really magical. So we're excited for this year. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. Right. And now two or three years removed from that record deal that was presented to you, do you still feel it was the best idea? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's just going in for a record deal, going in as, an, as a new artist, you basically give up every right to everything. Right. If, if you have established yourself as, as a group or an artist or whatever, and and you, you have fans, you have, you have all this thing, all these things tied up in a little package with a bow on it. Then you can go to a label and negotiate some things. You can negotiate rights or percentages or whatever. But if you win a competition, you have no, no say. And so that's, it can be good. It can be bad. It just depends. It really, you could sign the deal and be the next big thing, or you could get shelved and never see the light of day. And then you're owing money, owing money. So we just thought just being brand new that we needed to establish ourselves more. And I, we still feel good about that. There are no regrets there. And what is it like to have those two projects? Does it, uh, does it help with the mentality of everything? And if you're stuck in, you know, one side of things, you have the other side to sort of let your creativity out and maybe get unstuck where you are on the other side? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, As far as my solo stuff, I've definitely been focusing more on on Calamity Jane, um, just because we kind of want to roll with with songs and it's just going really well. Um, But I I wouldn't say that it really interferes. I haven't found it to interfere with each other. just because my solo stuff is a little a little different stylistically than what we're releasing as a duo. So it's kind of two different things, but it does help. I think they help each other because I can I can promote the duo on my on my solo stuff and we get you know we can just help each other out. So that's it only I've not really found it to be to to interrupt each other or it's, it's been a good thing. I, I feel good about it, but definitely more of a focus on, on the duo nowadays, which is totally fine with me. It's, it's going really well. Yeah. And did you get any ideas from her wedding that you're taking over to your own? Um, well, Lucy and I are, we're very alike in a lot of ways are very different in a lot of ways. And she, she's this, you know, beautiful princess with the big, the big poofy dress and just, hearts and pink flowers and gorgeous but I'm a little my style's a little different so um but as far as some of the music ideas and things I'll, I might you know steal from her a little bit but but yeah it's been really cool us both getting married very close to each other and and just and she's she's actually um in the process of planning my bachelorette party now so nice yeah, yeah. so is that going to take place in Nashville we're actually going to Asheville, North Carolina. So we're going to get out of Nashville for that. Just kind of have a relaxed um, winery kind of weekend. Yeah. So it's, it's been good. No, it's, it was, it was really special. I actually, my band played for her wedding. And so that was really fun. I was just, it was very special to be able to share that with her. And what is the next year sort of hold for you um you know do you have plans or is it just kind of everything is on hold until things in the world get figured out more well as far as my solo stuff goes i'm i'm writing and trying to figure out if i'm you know when my next release i haven't released new music for a while so it's time um but as far as the duo stuff goes we're actually working on we have a new single that is getting mixed and mastered in the next week. We're going to release that soon. And we, we're we just going to release music. We're just going to release singles and as much as we can do. And whenever we can tour, we'll tour. So we're just doing everything digitally now. Um, of course, we can do some you know rounds here in town and some smaller stuff. But we just want to do as much as we possibly can for the year. So we have a lot of big plans. And uh nothing's really on hold. We're just kind of waiting on the world to open up again so we can perform live. So that's, that's our next, our next thing to look into. Yeah. And it feels like, I don't know if it's because of the past year and what happened, or if it's more because of the 
unique sort of digital age, but it feels like albums are really almost going away. Like artists are really, I feel looking more towards just releasing music when they have it and just putting it out there and letting people hear it rather than, you know, putting together this full album that they're going to release at a certain date. Are you finding that? That's kind of what people are doing now. I mean, releasing an album is good and it's great, but you have so many songs. I mean, if you're looking at it practically, even without everything that's kind of gone down, Mm -hmm. if you're looking at it practically, unless you you have like your hardcore heart or diehard fans, they're going to listen to your album and they're going to put it in their car and they're going to repeat because they're amazing but most people most of your new fans aren't going to do that they'll they'll just listen to the single that they've heard or something that's been promoted so financially speaking and practically speaking it's smarter to just do singles now some artists release a single every six months or every year which in that case you probably should release an album because it's but if you're releasing a single every month or two then it just generates interest and keeps marketing going. And there's, it's just a little smarter, in my opinion. If you're, I mean, you could record all, all of your whole album and just release singles, which I think is, is a little smarter. And just, I don't know, it just makes more sense in, in this day and age because people's attention spans are very short. So a whole album, you're just going to have so many songs that are, that are looked over and forgotten about. I know I've listened to like Kelsey Ballerini, I think it was her second full album. And she had so many songs on there that she'd written herself that were phenomenal. I mean, they just blew my mind and they never were released to radio, never had any marketing done at all, which I'm like, they were her best songs in my opinion and probably in a lot of other people's opinions, but because it was on an album and not released one by one, people just overlook things. So I am more of a single fan than at nowadays, just because of, of just the statistics and things, but albums are fun to release though. Down in Nashville, like on the artist side, on the songwriting side, is it really a daily grind? Like if you want to make it down there, no matter what level you're at, if you stop running and get off the treadmill, are you done? Not really. I mean, if you have, if you have a good social media presence, Instagram, all the stuff, which I struggle with, I mean, I keep it up, but I'm really bad at it um, for myself. But if you keep that up, then most of the time people don't know if you take a little break and don't want to go out every night and do, you just take a little break and chill and record some videos at home. And so probably 20 years ago, you would have had to go out every night, every night, every night, show up to everything. Now you can do, you know, keep your social media up and you can take a little break, but it is good to, to be as active and networking as possible. This year though, has stopped a lot of that. So people have been forced to find new ways to, to keep their momentum and to keep their presence, um, which has been challenging for, for me because I'm more of an in-person kind of, kind of thing. I mean, I'd rather go, go and meet people in person than do a virtual thing. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's not an end game, but it is good to, it's definitely beneficial, way more beneficial than, than to stay at home. Right. And so when everything starts to open up a bit, are you ready to hit the ground running and finally get out there? And cause it's, it's kind of difficult to kind of gauge, um, you know, how much it's actually impacted everything, right? It is. That's, you know, that's, that's a good point. Me, I am social, but I'm also not, I'm kind of a, um, what is, what is an extroverted introvert? Kind of, um, so networking is not my favorite. It's not. And I really do try to pick, be, be sure that what I'm going to is going to, to going to matter. Right. Yeah. Cause there's so many things in Nashville that say, this is the best thing ever. And you'll get there and you're like, well, I've just wasted so much money to get in the door. I, I mean, and I don't mean to be negative. I'm just being real. Yeah, like, there's for sure. a lot of things that are over, over advertised 
and they're not what they say they're going to be. Um, so you kind of figure those things out as you're here and know what, what is going to be beneficial for you to go to and what's not. Um, and it's so funny because people say it's a networking opportunity, but you go there and you find your friends and you talk to them. So you're not even really networking. It's just, I guess you're just making, making an appearance, say, Hey, I'm here. Hi. But you don't really network with new people. You just hang out with your friends. So I'm kind of outing all of the artists in Nashville. That's what we do. We say we're networking, but usually we're just hanging out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, and that's where having a duo partner and a partner in crime helps with going out and doing networking things. You have someone to kind of feed off of and cause I'm, I'm really bad at it. I'm really, really bad at it. Um, and I'm, sometimes I just come off as, as a little, maybe not really shy, but I'm, I'm kind of shy, but I kind of sound, seem like I'm a little stuck up and oh, I don't okay. mean to, to seem that way. I feel horrible when it, when I know that I've come across that way. So it's a challenge for me, but um, I'm excited to, to actually get to go out and, and be with, be with people. Um, of course I've, you know, I've not stayed in completely, but things are just so different and, and it's just, it'll be good for Nashville to get back on its feet and, and to be normal again, for sure. Yeah. Like that's got to be one of the, one of the top cities. Well, yeah. One of the top cities probably that, you know, that has the biggest impact because of the amount of people that are going out on a nightly basis to play and to watch, yeah. uh, to network, you say. So it's got to be huge for Nashville to have this little stint. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's good that, that venues are still, they're still open. Um, but if you look at it in a way that venues used to close at 3 a.m. and now they close at, I think, 11. So there's a whole, you know, chunk of time that a whole, basically a whole set of music or a whole band space that's missed. So, you know, it's it's been really rough on on players and musicians, especially that their whole, like their, their jobs are, are based and dependent on Broadway. So it's, it's just been, and, and then after the bombing, like second Avenue is, is completely being renovated and built some from the ground up in some places. So it's just been a tough year. And, um, but, but there's a lot, and there's a lot of, you know, people doing virtual things and making, making tips that way. So people have really supported, supported musicians throughout this hard time. And, and I, I go, I'm out of town a lot. So I, I travel on the weekends. So that's been more of my, my thing versus staying in Nashville and performing a lot. I do a lot of, you know, business stuff, but then performing is on the road mostly for me. Right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, we hope that things will go back to normal here in the next few months, but who knows as we go. So well, the vaccine <laughs> is circulating. So hopefully that, that will help some things. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure learning about your journey. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me and I hope you have a great day. Yeah. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Once again, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to share, like, follow us on all your favorite streaming platforms. Thank you so much for joining us on the Music Made Me podcast, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.